everyone to today's preservation workshop. Today we'll be talking about how to make a homemade book weight. And so these book weights are very versatile. They can help prop up a book, prop open a book, even hold a page or hold a map or a manuscript flat. Um, they are used widely around the special collections community um, in libraries and museums. Um, multiple different functions of these. We use them in our exhibits. We use them to help prop um, more fragile books that have weak bindings or have just tight bindings. Ones that are, haven't maybe been used very much. Um, so they might need some help, ginger, uh, gentle care on how to open the books up so we don't crack the spine. Um, but these tools are really fun to use. Um, they also are akin to the book snake, which also they're just a long string of metal beads most of the time wrapped in fabric that you can lay on top of materials, but book weights are a little bit bigger. They come in a variety of sizes. Um, these ones are kind of more medium sized ones, maybe even on the larger size. Um, so I did a few of these in different types of fabrics, um, but I'll be showing you ones that you can used to make for your own collections. Um, if you work in a, a library or museum, you can make these for your institution, because um, sometimes they can be a little expensive, um, but these would, should last just as long. Um, you can make them with archival materials. Um, so this one is actually made with um, polypropylene um, pellets, so just like regular stuffing, weighted stuffing beads, um, so we can get started by kind of going over what types of materials we'll need today um, for this workshop. So some materials you'll need are some cotton thread. So this is just um, a cotton pearl. Um, so I, I just kind of chose it because I like the size of it um, and it's easy to use. You don't have to double. Um, up the string so you can just use a single strand of it um, to help you with your sewing. Um, I also have this so if you guys are more used to the thinner kind of polyester thread you can also use that if you have that. Um, but I would suggest getting some cotton thread um, just to, to make sure that all the materials are archivally safe. Um, then we have some double-sided tape. So this is archival um, double-sided tape. All kind of adhesives are not super great, but this isn't going to be touching our materials. It's going to be inside the, the baggie um, to hold it kind of flat. So, but this is a really nice tool um, to just kind of seal the bag a little bit more. Um, we have our fabric. So this is just a cotton um, kind of muslin um, uh, fabric. It looks like muslin, but it's just 100% cotton. Um, and so it's a little see-through. Um, so later on, I will be showing you a trick to make it a little bit thicker. Um, so I would suggest if you do want to have some fun with it, like I did this one, this is just a, a sail fabric that I got. Um, so it's fun. This is going to be for my personal collection of um, books. So I didn't not all my books are rare or fragile, so I thought that would be fun to do something interesting like that. But this is the cotton. Um, it's double layer, and so it looks really nice, and you can um, set this on your book and not worry about any transference of um, acid or anything like that. Um, so I would suggest undyed cotton fabric for that. Um, I am going to be using plastic sandwich baggies to hold my pellets just so that they um, stay inside the, the weight in there. So um, we'll use the sandwich baggies. Um, but if there's an archival product that you want to use, a plastic or a sleeve or something like that, you can use that too. It just depends on your level of comfort comfortability with that. Um, and then we have our polyfill, um, poly pellets. So this is polypropylene. Um, that is a stable plastic. Um, that's kind of why I chose this um, because 
you can use like lead shot or um, like little pieces of metal um, to fill your weights, but I was struggling to find some of that for sale. Um, I'm sure it's out there, but I just used this because it was readily available. Um, I got ours from the hop from Hobby Lobby, and then I think Joanne's locally in Davenport. Um, so wherever you're at, you can check your local craft store and see if they have this product. Um, and it, it's pretty easy to use. Um, then we'll go on to our tools. So I have a half cup measuring cup because I wanted to just see what the weights were at first, but you can use a cup or a half cup, whichever you prefer, um, whatever you're comfortable with. You'll have your, your needle, um, and then you'll have a pencil. So I'm just using a softer leaded pencil so I can mark the fabric, but a regular number two pencil should mark the fabric just fine. Um, you have your ruler, so I'm just going to be using this. My measurements aren't going to be super strict, um, just because we're going to be sewing it and you don't need to see the inside of the, the baggie once you're done. So a ruler for that and then a scissors. So we will kind of get started. Um, so the first thing um, what you would want to do is to measure out your polypropylene pellets. And so you'll take your little baggie um, and you'll want to be careful with pouring the pellets because just like rice or any other um, product that uh, kind of goes everywhere. <laughs> These might go everywhere. So at home, I had another bowl that I set my measuring cup inside and then I could kind of just do it um, however I felt comfortable pouring, but um, you'll want to be careful pouring this into the measuring cup. So I'm going to measure out a cup of pellets and then pour them into, oh see I spilled right there, um, but that's no biggie, we can just put them back up in the cup. So you'll dump them into the, the um, baggie, and then you will measure out another half cup. Oh, spilt a little bit more, but that's okay, we'll pick those guys up. So this is about a cup of pellets, um, and this is a kind of a good weight for the uh, for the book weight because it kind of allows a little flexibility in the bag, uh, movability. So you can like maybe make a little trench in the book weight to rest your book on if it if you want a little um, support in the back. Um, so it kind of is nice. They're pretty versatile. So. From this point, you have your pe uh, pellets in the baggie. I kind of just lay it a little bit flatter like this. And then I try and start closing up the bag and getting all that air out. Uh, just because you don't want tons of air to make it squishy uh, and not lay super flat. So you'll just, uh, and we might have to do this another time too in the future just to because you can kind of see there's some a little bit more air um, when you flip it over and so you can just even do that and kind of get all that air out and seal it on up and then so you have your part of your bag with all your pellets in and then this flat empty part of the baggie and this is what we're going to be um, folding over the bag and then adhering that with the double-sided tape so that you don't have that kind of loose inside your book weight. So I'm going to peel some of the tape off. So this tape is really nice. Um, I think we just get it from Gaylord or even University Products. They're just a archival supply store um, that we use here at the Richardson Sloan Special Collection Center. Um, but you can certainly find some stuff online, um, whatever price point you're comfortable with. So you can do two strips of the double-sided tape so that it is laced flush with the bag. So you don't have that wiggling around. And the 
then it's a little hard to get this off. Okay, so then I'll put this closer to the edge of our baggie. I'll get those beads back down into their places and make that pretty tight. And so now we have our little interior part of our book weight um, here. Okay, everyone. So we are finished with filling our sandwich bag with the polypropylene pellets. Um, we have taped up the edge onto the package of the um, pellets. Um, so one note about this is that you can make it either flatter um, so kind of like this one or even this one or you can kind of shape the pellets a little bit more and make it into kind of a more oblong rounded um, book weight. So it kind of depends on what you want to use it for or if you want a variety you can do it in different kind of shapes um, and then this one you can't make a trench a little a trench in the book weight as easily but you also have more poofy sides. Um, this one, you can do that too, but it's a little bit different shape. So we'll set this to the side. Um, and then now we are going to be going on to our next part, which is cutting the fabric. So we'll gather our undyed cotton fabric, our ruler, our scissors, and then our pencil. And so the size of the book weight kind of is determined by this little pouch. So you can measure it. Um, so it's about three and a half by six and a half. Uh, so what I did, I added a couple inches or an inch and a half onto each of those measurements, uh, just because I knew that the fabric and uh, needed to wrap around the weight. And then you also have to sew it. So you'll need some space for that too. Uh, so I didn't want to sew too much because we were we're going to be sewing by hand. If you guys do have sewing machines at home, feel free to measure more exactly. Um, just kind of estimate how much uh, fabric you'll need on the side. I would say maybe a half an inch if you're going to be sewing because then you can kind of get that seam really close to that edge. Uh, but if you're hand sewing and you're new at it, um, or if you're expert, you can do kind of however you feel comfortable. Um, but this is kind of how I did it. So I had the six and a half, so I added one and a half inches to that to make eight. And then for the um, other part, I doubled the width of the, the weight. So that was three and a half, so I doubled that to seven, and then I added an inch and a half, so that would be eight and a half. Because I knew that the beads would need some extra fabric to cover it, and so I'm just going to cut out that eight by eight and a half inch square for us right now. So I'll just measure kind of loosely the eight and a half inches. And I'm just marking the fabric with a soft leaded pencil, but you can definitely use a, a regular number two pencil too for, it, for this type of work, because that's what I have at home. Um, so I've just made a few marks on there and then I'm going to take from this edge, and my edge wasn't very clean, so I'm just going to do a little bit more, and then do that eight inch so that I can make my lines. Okay, so I'm just going to run my ruler right along these markings that I did and make a line so that I have a, a cleaner line to cut from. I kind of need all the help that I need, I can get when I'm cutting because I'm not a straight cutter. So if you guys are like me, you might need something like that too. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut the fabric out. And you don't have to worry about these markings because if you use this, this side to do your sewing on, it can be turned inside out. Um, and you won't ever see these markings on your book weight. So we have our little uh, fabric square. Um, and I have some that are cut out previously. So 
I might just try our book weights with um, a single sheet. So you can double up if you want. So if you look, if you um, leave the the zipper zipper lock on your baggie, um, you'll see it through the the pouch, and so you can see that little line. If you don't care if you see that, that's okay. That's good. Um, because I did that with my first one, and this is a, a calico fabric, so I, I didn't think about that, and I learned that as I was going. So when I was experimenting, I did that. But if you um, double up, you definitely really, you can still kind of see it, but you don't have to. Um, one tip that you could do, I tried this out, is I cut off the zip lock, and we have some really nice, the double-sided tape, and so I just used that to seal up the baggie, and then I, I did the similar um, taping of this uh, flap onto the, the part with the beads. So it looks like this, so we might try that with this one here um, and see what it looks like. So what you'll do is, essentially it's not super complex, you'll just kind of see I'd like to place my little bag and just see, okay, so this this fabric will work and cover my entire baggie if I sew it about an inch, of, like a quarter inch in. Um, so then I don't have to worry about uh, any gaps or anything like that. And so next, after that, we will want to fold this over. The edges aren't super clean, but don't worry about that you're just going to be sewing that. So I just kind of unspool it, kind of like that. I didn't measure anything, so I'm just kind of eyeballing. And so you just put this, you'll take your needle, and then um, you try and fit it through the eye hole. I'm going to do that just because it's easier. Okay. So one way that you don't have to, um, if you want to just use a single thread, um, you can, I learned this trick from a University of Iowa book art student. I did not know about this beforehand, but if you take your thread and lay it out on a flat surface, you can poke a hole put the needle into the center of the thread and kind of lift up and then you have a natural stopper to the string so it's tight you just kind of place the the lit, the thread on the the table and then you just kind of poke it and then you can just pull it through and it's stuck so that's good i'm going to make a knot at the end so that my my thread doesn't come through I just knotted a couple times. Um, so. so it won't come through the fabric. But if you're choosing to do a couple different strands, you can certainly do that. Um, and then that that's a little bit easier to tie. And so I just kind of, I'm very novice at my um, sewing skills. And so I just um, learned the back stitch. And so that's pretty easy and it looks nice around the edge. Um, you can kind of see the threads, but if you're kind of new at that, it doesn't matter because um, it still looks pretty nice. And this one you can kind of see the um, the white lines a little bit more just because of the red fabric and I think it still looks nice it shows that it's homemade and that you did it with care um, so uh, I just kind of start at the edge of the fabric about a quarter inch in and I just stick my needle through the back of the fabric and then I poke another hole I thread the needle through the fabric Try and make it a straight line as possible. Um, and then you just sew it so your needle is through the two sides of the fabric. Um, 
and whatever you're more comfortable with. If you don't want to try that at first, you can just do um, one side and then follow the same pattern but without doing the, the extra little step. So you'll just thread your thread, uh, thread through the fabric. And then the second part, so you see the knot is over here and then you have your thread coming out over here. So you'll want to stick your needle back over by that knot and then you'll have the needle come out on the other side of this fabric. So that's kind of the back stitching uh, part. So you're just kind of going over stuff on the back. So you'll just do that so you can see I threaded my needle through over here and then put it out on the other side and you can see that first stitch is right there and so that's where we put our needle in initially and then we came out and then that's where we put it in the second time and then this is where we came out that second time so it looks it looks very nice um, it's depending on your um, skill level it might be a little bit straighter than others um, but I like this stitch because it's pretty quick and simple um, so we'll just do a few more stitches um, so you guys can see kind of how it goes so I'm going to go back to this first starting point uh, the, the second starting point um, so that edge of that first strand that you see on this side and then you'll go through on the opposite side of this this thread right here and you'll just go through and sew that and so another thing that as you're sewing I didn't really since this fabric does not have a pattern it doesn't really matter about what side you kind of do it on um, this fabric is a little wrinkly so if that really matters um, you can choose um, if you're using two pieces you can choose a less wrinkly side um, but for like this calico one you want to do it on the wrong side of the pattern so where it's lighter or where you see the back of the, the pattern for the inside because you'll be turning it inside out to see the pattern on the when you put the backing in so you'll put your needle um, continuing with this you'll put your needle right there you'll thread it through on the other side Make sure that your thread does not get in the way of your work that you're doing. And then you'll just pull that through. And so you'll continue that um, along this edge and then along this edge. So the short bottom side and then the one side up there. Um, so you'll see it looks like this. So I've done this one ahead of time. It has two pieces of fabric. Um, along here so you can see the stitch work um, of the back edge or back stitch stitching um, and then you can see what it looks like on the back as well um, so that is one option so um, so once you're done with that um, you'll still have your needle on here um, on this thread mine just kind of my thread naturally ran out and then so I just thought oh that's a perfect um, time to stop with that one so I'm just going to steal this thread from over here and we'll use this as our thread to sew up this uh, book weight so I'll make a hole in here We can cut this part out. <laughs> Katie just walked in. It's a Saturday here at the library. So. So. Now that I've shown you the um, end result of your sewing, um, hand sewing until we had to put the baggie in so this you'll actually turn on inside out and so it's a little bit more difficult with two pieces of fabric um, but it's still pretty easy um, if you guys have taken home ec in 
in middle school, I remember making some fun um, shapes, shaped pillows, and I think I made like a little sachet for my uh, dresser drawer with lavender in it. I was really pleased with it. Um, that was kind of the only time that I got to got to use a sewing machine. Um, but I like hand sewing. It's fun. It's something that you can work on and get better at. And so this is what your um, pouch will look like for your book weight. And so you can grab your book weight that you filled and then you will just make sure that you're putting it in the center and then you just kind of put it right in there. You might have to shimmy it a little bit. So now it's in there. You can see, oh, it looks really nice and it has, um, it fits well. And so what you'll want to do to close it up is to fold this over. I just kind of tuck it in, um, kind of make this line like a little um, curved um, section. So it looks nice. This fabric is a little bit shorter, so it wants to pop up. But you can start sewing this. Um, so some of our librarians here at the Davenport Library have done a really fun job on showing how to visibly mend things. So if you guys want to check out those videos on our YouTube, you can certainly do that and find out some fun, fanciful ways to close up your bags. I'm just going to do a really simple stitch and go from there. So I'm just going to poke it in at the end, try and get to the closest to the side as I can. And so I'm just going to do a simple, um, I'm not sure what type of stitch it's called. I'm sure someone could tell me what it is. But I'm just going to sew and then put my thread through there and so it kind of catches and makes a little uh, loop. And so there's going to be a little line on top of my fabric. Where it, where you can see that. So I'm just sewing over um, the work, the edge right there and then I'm just putting my needle through the little loop that I've created with um, the sewing and so it's creating a nice little line um, and you can kind of work it however you like uh, make it how big or small that you would um, I would just recommend doing it a little bit in just so you're catching all that fabric and making sure that it's well sealed and so you'll just do that across the top. So as we are finishing up sewing up the top of our um, book weight, we will um, continue that sewing stitch of stitching through the top of the, the bag and then going through that little loop that we've created and then it will create that line across the top of the bag. So it's a nice little stitch um, that we can do. So you'll just continue that to the end. And you can do them as widely spaced as you want, but you'll just want to make sure to um, do them close enough together that it seals the baggie completely. So I think we're on our last one. So I'm just going to put this through one last time. And then I'm going to do this. Put the needle through that loop again. But I'm going to be using that as my final stitch. So I will be just kind of double knotting it. And I will actually make another knot at the end just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Let's do one, another one for good measure. Okay, so our baggie is sewn, and so we will clip the string off, and you have your first book weight. So um, 
It's really nice. It's really versatile. You can do it a lot of different ways. Um, so this is just one way. Um, I'm going to try and experiment with some shapes and different things like that. So that will be really fun. Um, and so then just to clean up your needle, you just kind of pull that thread because we made that really nice little um, stopper. And so you can see it can just be pulled right out and then nothing, you can reuse this thread if you would like. Um, and then everything's cleaned up. And it's pretty, um, it's not a very messy project. Um, just possibly spilling the beads all over, and that's the only thing. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you are interested in other preservation techniques and tips, um, please check out our future workshops. Um, the next one is in June, and we will be covering encapsulation of material. So not lamination, but um, Encapsula encapsulation and then also we um, have done one previous one on scrapbook um, preservation so how to care for those how to take images possibly out of the scrapbook that you've inherited so please check that out that's on our YouTube um, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing more of you in the future thank you